Welcome back. So we have one more definition for today. So it's the one is that we're going to define definability. So let's start with a few questions, uh, which we've seen before. So the first one is, consider that formula over there. So there exists an x such that x times x is uh, y. Okay, so this x star x, where a star here is being uh, interpreted as plus in the structure of the integers. Uh, to decide if this is true or not, we need to know what's the value of y, right? So we're going to have that this formula, um, there exists x, x star x equals y, is going to be true in the integers with plus and according to some variable assignment s, if and only if, what? Well, it depends on what the value of y is, right? So what or what we are assigning y to. So the variable assignment is going to assign y some integer value and it depends on what it is, right? So remember that star here is being interpreted as plus. So this is the same. This is going to be true if and only if the value of s of y, which is an integer, is even, all right? So this is true exactly at the moment when y here uh, it takes an even value. So what about this case here? Same, same formula, but now x times. So we're going to get that this formula now is true in integers with times if and only if what's the what's s of y is what it's now star is a uh, time so that's true if and only if y is a perfect square meaning is a square of some integer number right so for y equals 4 that's true for y equals 9 that's true for y equals 16 for y equals 25 for all of those you can find such, such an x but only for those what about uh, the reals with times? Here it gets interesting too. What do you think the answer is? So when, what do we need y to satisfy? Well, again, it's the same as if you're the square of something and which real numbers are the square of something? The positive ones, right? So exactly if y is a, a non-negative number, then it's going to be an x, that x squared is y, and if y is negative, then there is no such x. Right, so we saw that in, three, in the three cases here, we get even numbers, uh, here we get the perfect squares, and here we get the non-negative numbers. Uh, the same formula and value structure is, def is defined in different sets. So we are here what we are saying is that these formulas are defining this set as the set where, uh, where the formula is true. So, okay, so before defining this in general, I mean, here is the idea, no? what it means to define a set. Uh, we want to uh, improve our notation a little bit, so because these variable assignments are a bit annoying, so let's simplify that a little bit. Now that we are used to dealing with variable assignments, which is necessary to the definitions, we can be a bit more relaxed with, the, with our notation. So first of all, uh, here is a bit of notation. So if you have a bunch of variables, and the free variables among phi are including those, we sometimes write, uh, instead of writing the formula phi, phi is a formula here, instead of writing the formula phi alone, we write phi parenthesis x1 up to xn to emphasize that, x, that the free variables of phi are among x1 up to xn. Okay, so for instance, uh, if phi is the formula up there, that exists an x, x star x equals y, we, we will write uh, phi of y instead of just phi alone. Because this emphasizes that here y is a free variable and the truth of it depends on the value of y. It doesn't depend on x, but it depends on y. So y is kind of like an input in a sense to the formula. It's not really an input, so don't take it literally. But it's, when we write this, we just mean that y is among the free variables and the value, the truth value of phi is going to depend on y 
and that's what we want to emphasize. Then, if we have a bunch of uh, elements in our original structure, in our structure M, which could be any of those three in that case, we are going to write uh, that phi is true in M about A1 up to AN, okay? So, or of A1 up to the So, phi is true of A1 up to AN in M. And that means, um, notice we don't have a variable assignment here, that means that if we take a variable assignment S that maps the variable xi to a to a1 and the variable x2 to a2 and the variable xn to an, right? So right like here. If you take a variable assignment that does that, then we can use the definition we had before variable assignment and phi is true in M according to that variable assignment. And as we saw in that theorem before, when, we, when you want to know if a formula is true in a structure, according to a variable assignment, all you need to know is the values of the variable assignment on the free variables of S, right? You, you don't care about what, is the uh, what are the values of the variable assignment outside the free variables. All that matters is the free variables. So that's why all that matters is what it does on this x1 up to xn, and we don't care about what S does on the other variables. And essentially, this a1 up to an are telling you what it does. Okay, so in this case, we can write, so for instance, in that example that we have up there, we will write that the integers with plus, so let's say this one is, um, this is the formula phi of y, models the formula phi of 2, right, because 2 is even, and phi c plus does not model phi of 3. Because since the only part we care about the variable assignment is the value of y, we put it in the parentheses. Essentially, we are replacing the y up here for the 2, or the y up here for the 3. That in the integers plus, the formula is true if y is 2, but it's false if y is 3. And now, uh, well, definition of the finable set becomes easier to, uh, to write. And we say that um, a set A of n tuples is definable in M, in a structure M, if there is a well-formed formula phi with n or at most n free variables between x1 up to xn such that a can be defined as a set of all the tuples a1 all the tuples yeah, a1 up to an in m to the n which make phi true okay so for instance here if we take the set of all the a's that belong to z such that c plus makes phi, this, recall that this is phi of y, phi of a true, what do we get? Well, that's going to be exactly even the set of the even integers, subset of the integers, and it exactly corresponds to the even integers. So here is an example for you guys. Consider the set a of all the pairs, we're not looking at pairs, uh, of real numbers such that a is less than b. Oh, let's do less than or equal b. Okay, so all the pairs of numbers such that the first one is less than or equal to the second one. And we want to know, we want to know that uh, whether it's definable in R, is a definable in R? What do you guys think? Well, the example up there can be useful, right? So if you want to show that is, something is definable, the answer is going to be yes. If you want to show that something is definable, you have to explicitly give a formula that defines it. It's a formula, uh, in this case, the formula has to have two free variables because we have a and b. So a is a subset here of r squared. This is a, a is a subset of r squared. So let phi of two variables, let's call it y and z. You can call them whatever you want be the formula and we need to define a well-formed formula that is going to define this set A. So it's a formula that is going to be true of a tuple of a pair y common z in this particular structure r star if and only if y common z belongs to A therefore if and only if x, uh, y is below z. Uh, here's the trick. So we know that square numbers are exactly the positive numbers, right? So the positive numbers are squares of things, the negative numbers are not. 
So what I'm gonna write the formula to be is there exists an x such that z minus y equals x times x times x. Okay, so this is gonna be true in the reals if and only if. So this is phi. This is our formula phi and it has two free variables y and z and x is not a free variable, x is a bound variable. And we have that the reals with times satisfy the formula phi with two real numbers a and b replacing y and z if and only if b minus a is a square if and only if a is less than or equal b which occurs if and only if the pair a comma b belongs to a right so now the formula phi is defining is true exactly of the pairs a comma b that belong to our set a so it's defining our set a so this example up here we can be read as saying that the ordering on the reals can be defined um, so we don't have the tools yet to prove that something is not definable but we'll have them soon uh, there are many sets that are not definable because there are only countably many sets that you can define. You can, it means to define a set, you need to explicit, uh, explicitly write a formula. And a formula is just a finite string of characters. So, countably many. If your vocabulary is countable, the number of formulas is countable. But how many subsets are there of the integers? Continue many. How many subsets of the reals? Even more. So there are many more subsets than there are things that are definable. So there are many things that you cannot define. Uh, but we'll see later how to prove some th things that are not definable. Uh, and this is very important because whenever you're doing mathematics, you want to look at relations defined within your structures and you want to know how to define them. All right, we'll see more about this next week.